Hey everybody, and welcome to Forming Film. This series will try to analyze movie scenes, techniques, topics, or really whatever seems interesting in an attempt to better understand film form. To start us off, let's talk villains. Hi. In many cases, a villain is a driving force behind a movie. Their plan or goal can force a hero into action as they terrorize a single person or the entire world. No matter what type of villain, whether it be a psychopath or an authority figure, there is something that all the greatest have in common. They are terrifying. Sure, monsters and demons are scary, but the villain of a horror film filled with jump scares isn't automatically terrifying. Even villains that pose a threat to the entire human race can seem undaunting despite any technical danger. No, no, no. What I'm talking about is a character whose mere presence frightens an audience and sends shivers down your spine. So, how are these characters created in film? This could be done in many different ways, but today, I'm going to analyze one of my personal favorite movie villains of all time. Ah, Landa! That's in here! Emmanuel, voici le colonel SS Landa. Il sera chargé de la sécurité pour la première. Let's talk about the large anti-Semitic elephant in the room. Hans Landa is a Nazi. In film terms, being a Nazi or anything that draws inspiration from Nazi influence is a one-way ticket to villainy. Still, no matter how obvious this symbol of evil may seem, Hans Landa's terrifying nature comes from the power he holds, not whose side he's fighting for. The Nazi officer uniform is a tool that instantly tells the audience that this man has the ability to destroy anybody who defies him. However, Hans Landa is not a villain simply because he is a Nazi, but rather because of the perceived cruelty he can display. In the opening scene of Inglorious Bastards, we never even need to see his power demonstrated to be terrified. Rather, the masterfully crafted tension warns the audience about how dangerous Hans Landa is. Any and every film student could go on for hours about how Quentin Tarantino's dialogue about seemingly irrelevant pop culture topics helps create entire scenes. Entire song. It's a metaphor for big dicks. No, it ain't. It's about a girl who's very vulnerable. She's been fucked over a few times and uh, then she meets a guy who's Whoa, 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 whoa. Time out, Green Bay. Tell that fucking bullshit to the tourists. Toby, who the fuck is Toby? Like a virgin's not about some sensitive girl who meets a nice fella. That's what Trugu's about. Although that's a part of it, the essence of this opening scene, along with everything that makes Hans Landa so terrifying, derives from one single thing, knowledge. Although it sounds almost too simple, when concerning Hans Landa, everything comes down to what we as the audience know and don't know, and also what the characters know and don't know. When Hans Landa first meets the Frenchman, we as the audience only know one thing, Hans Landa is a Nazi looking for hiding Jews. The Frenchman and his family seem very tense, but overall keep their cool. As Hans Landa's investigation slowly proceeds beyond his intimidating Jew hunter speech, Tarantino hits the audience with devastating information. There is, in fact, a Jewish family hidden under the floorboards. I, on the other hand, love my unofficial title precisely because I've earned it. The feature that makes me such an effective hunter of the Jews is, as opposed to most German soldiers, I can think like a Jew, where they can only think like a German. <laughs> More precisely, German soldier. <laughs> Tension builds as this information forms more doubt. Will the Frenchman give up the family? Or well, more importantly than that, does Hans Landa know? Those four words go through the minds of everybody the colonel meets throughout the film. It iterates why he is so petrifying. Tarantino allows the audience to know everybody's thoughts throughout the film, except for the villains. Hans Lana confidently and flawlessly maneuvers his way through interrogations, in four different languages no less, never revealing his hand until it's too late. Now, Major Hellstrom is given some of the same treatment in a memorable card game scene, but this scene is more situational than character driven. 
Why does the audience know that Hans Lana is dangerous? Because of the other characters' knowledge and reactions. And with well-timed sound and silence, of course. Does Hans Landa know? The characters involved are constantly jousting mentally with Hans Landa, and they are always at a disadvantage. Even as an audience, we do not know what he is thinking, but we do know that at any moment, our heroes can be trapped. Or, you know, strangled by Hans Landa. And everything he does is some version of an interrogation, and every piece of interrogation is uh, a, a piece of theater or, or, or uh, a mind game with uh, the participant. The best evidence of Landa's intimidating power is in his reunion with a Jewish woman that once escaped his bloodshed, Shoshana as she is forced to sit and talk with a man that had her family killed right next to her, all Shoshana can wonder is, does Hans Landa know? Does he know who I am? Even after many viewings of the film, I have no idea if he knows who Shoshana really is, but the scene never fails to give the creeping suspicion that he does, making him all the more dangerous. So that's it. That's the formula for creating a terrifying character. Make a villain mysterious while everyone else cowers in their presence. Oscar winning combination, right? Oscar and Penelope, that's an uber bingo. Well, of course not. Aren't you clinching? The combination of phenomenal acting and filmmaking is what created the wonderfully horrifying character. But knowing what not to do is just as important as knowing what works. Jumping back in time over a decade shows that Quentin Tarantino once failed to create a threatening villain with a similar scenario in Jackie Brown. In this film, Odell Roby is an arms dealer willing to kill to protect his own interest and to keep his wallet full. In one scene, Odell visits a friend that he had recently bailed out of jail for $10,000. Odell convinces his character to hide in the trunk of his car to help him set up for a job selling guns. At the end of the scene, it turns out that Odell had lied about helping out the man with a lawyer and the entire conversation was a ruse that enables Ordell to get the upper hand in killing the man unnoticed. Okay, so what? Exactly how long I gotta be in this motherfucker? Well, although this scene shows that Ordell could be a dangerous man, it fails at its goal of making Ordell a scary villain, even though it follows a similar structure to the opening scene of Inglorious Bastards. 1. Slow walk up. 2. Demonstration of power over the other character. 3. Villain victory. So what went wrong? To start off, Ordell's scene builds zero to no tension. What made Hans Landa so scary was the tension built through the scene. Almost like a miniature play, Hans Landa slowly gains power over the Frenchman until he cracks and points out where the Jews were hiding even though Hans Landa probably already knew the truth from the beginning. This truth and end result is hidden from the scene, slowly building and building and building until... You're sheltering enemies of the state, are you not? Yes. You're sheltering them underneath your floorboards, aren't you? Yes. This is the first close-up shot in the entire film. Whether you notice it or not, this shot stands out as extremely important. And it is. Hans Lund has won, free to kill the Jewish family, making the action feel like defeat, as all of the tension explodes into operatic power. <laughs> Uh... 
Whereas in Jackie Brown, there is no tension buildup. We never feel like the friend is ever in danger, so Ordell is not intimidating. In control, sure, but not a danger. Yeah, yeah, we also get a close-up of the villain when he gains full control, but it doesn't have the same power as an in Inglorious Bastards. We don't know his plan yet, and we never even get a reaction shot of the victim. He's in the trunk for a Tarantino movie, which, historically... <laughs> Jesus Christ. I want him to witness the extent of my mercy by witnessing your deformed body. It's a pretty bad place to be. See, at this point, the audience has already figured out what is going to happen. Ardell is going to kill his friend. So, we wait for it to happen. And... Okay, there we go. He's dead. No surprise there, since we had already figured it out. This scene doesn't build tension, nor does it surprise us. I'm not trashing Jackie Brown as a movie, don't get me wrong, I love the film. Although Samuel Jackson and Quentin Tarantino made Ordell an engaging character that fits well into the story, they failed to make him intimidating beyond the man behind a gun. Man, look at me when I'm talking to you! And this shows in the other characters' reactions to him. If I have to tell you to shut up one more time, I'm gonna shut you up. Whereas, instead, this. This. That's how I want my villain to be. Ooh, that's a bingo. <laughs> Is that the way you say it? That's a bingo. I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you for watching the first episode of Forming Film. I'm John, and until next time... Are we ever dare you?